This video on Introduction to Feedback is a tutorial sheet giving a number of questions for students to try. We're going to assume that students are now familiar with the concept of feedback and how it affects closed loop behaviour. And this sheet will give you some tutorial questions to confirm that you can do that. Now students are reminded, as with all the tutorial sheets, that what you should do is read the questions and then pause the video while you attempt the questions. Only continue to look at the solutions provided once you've made a good attempt at these questions. Now a piece of background, just to remind you, this is the context we've got. <coughs> if there's no feedback with the system transfer function g of s, we've got a relationship between the output and the input of this form, y equals gr. When you introduce feedback, and you'll see we've given a very simple uh, diagram here, then you end up with a relationship, something like this, y equals gm over 1 plus gm times r. First question then, demonstrate that the introduction of feedback changes behaviour. And then secondly, is this a good thing or a bad thing and why? And illustrate your answer. Now, now is the time to pause before I continue to give some indicative answers. First then, it says demonstrate that the introduction of feedback changes behaviour. Well, in the open loop, we had y equals gr. In the closed loop, we had something of the form, oh, I've written that incorrectly, sorry, y equals gm over 1 plus gm into r. And clearly, if I use black, g is not the same as gm over 1 plus gm. So the closed loop behaviour is not the same as the open loop behaviour. Now what I'm going to do before I go to the second phrase is it says, all right, illustrate your answer, which in essence means, all right, put some numbers in so we can see what we're talking about. And then we'll answer the question, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Let's take a particular g then. So let g equal 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 1, and we'll let m equal some constant proportional gain k. So therefore, gm over 1 plus gm, which is the closed loop, is going to be k over s squared plus 2s plus 1 plus k. Now clearly, you can see g is not equal to gm over 1 plus gm. You can see the numbers jump out at you, the transfer functions, everything is different. So the next question was to ask, is this good or bad? And the answer is, could be either. Right, that's the key thing. It could be either. So obviously it could be good because you can use this um, compensator, m equals k, in order to improve the response time or improve the steady state gain or improve a number of characteristics depending on what you've got in the open loop. However, the most important thing is to demonstrate that it can also be bad. So for example, if here I chose k equal 100, what would I get? I'd get 100 over s squared plus 2s plus 101, and this is clearly very underdamped. All right, so you can see that it's possible with feedback to make performance very poor indeed. So just because you've used feedback doesn't mean you've necessarily improved performance. Second question, a system G is connected with three alternative choices of feedback, of K1, K2 and K3, and you can see the values here, K1 0.1, K2 1, K3 10. What we want you to do is compare and contrast the behaviour with these three choices, and then answer the question, is the closed loop behaviour better than the open loop? So now is the time to pause and for you to try this by yourself. I'm now going to move to a solution. First then, let's look 
at speed of response. So we can show that gm over 1 plus gm for this particular case is going to be written as 4k over s plus 6 plus 4k. And now what we can do is we can plug in the different values of k that we've been given and see what we get. So if I start with the poles. So k equals 0 0.1, then your pole polynomial is going to be s plus 6 plus 0 0.4. If I choose k equals 1, then your pole polynomial will be s plus 6 plus 4. And if I choose k equals 10, I will get s plus 6 plus 40. So fairly clearly, as k goes up, the pole gets faster. So that's the first part of the comparison. As I increase k, the pole gets faster. Next then, what about steady state gain? Well, let's just remind you of what we had. The closed loop transfer function was 4k over s plus 6 plus 4k. So if k equals 0 0.1, then the steady state gain is going to be 0 0.1. 0.4 over 6.4. If k equals 1, then the steady state gain will be 4 over 10. And if k equals 10, the steady state gain will be 40 over 46. So what do you notice? Again, as k goes up, the gain also goes up and approaches 1. Next then, what about the input activity? Well, what you can show if I put in my feedback diagram like this is that the largest error, OK, so the largest E of t is at t equals 0, because thereafter the output is increasing, so the error is coming down. And therefore, the largest u of t equals m times e of 0. So if we have m equals 0 0.1, then u max equals 0 0.1. We're assuming here for convenience that I'll write this here. We're assuming that r equals 1 just so we can normalize things. So if m equals 0 0.1, u max equals 0 0.1. If m equals 1, u max equals 1. And if m equals 10, u max equals 10. So clearly, as your gain increases, your maximum input also increases. So you've noticed we've got a faster response, a better steady state gain by increasing this uh, k, but we're also using much more of an input to achieve that. Question three then. A system g of s is to be connected in feedback with a proportional compensator m of s equals k. Select a compensator to ensure that the closed loop time constant is faster the 0.01 seconds, and you're given this g of s here. So again, now is the time to pause before we move to the solution. First then, let's write down what the closed loop transfer function is. So gc, which will be gm over 1 plus gm, can be rearranged to 16k over s plus 48 plus 16k. And let's remind ourselves what we wanted. We wanted the time constant to be less than 0 0.01. So in this case, the time constant is given as 1 over 48 plus 16k. Hopefully you can see that the time constant is the inverse of the pole position. So the time constant is 1 over 48 plus 16k, and we want this to be less than 0 0.01. So if I um, 
basically swap the 0 0.01 and 48 plus 16k, you'll find this gives you the same as 100 is less than 48 plus 16k, or 52 is less than 16k, or k is greater than 52 over 16. Now what I'm going to do is go to MATLAB and just look at the first two questions, just so you can see, are the answers what you expected? So there's MATLAB. Oh, we better just clear the screen. So, oh, we've lost our file. There it is. So first question. What I'm going to do is enter all the transfer functions and have a look and see what you get. So you see GC1 0.4 over 6.4 as you expected. As you increase the gain, you get 4 over S plus 10. As you increase the gain, 40 over S plus 46. And if I was to plot the corresponding responses for this, what do you notice? With K equals 0.1, you get a slow response down here, settling with a very low steady state value. As you increase k to 1, you get a slightly better gain, a slightly faster response. And as I increase k to 10, you get a better gain and a much faster response. And we've overlaid the open loop on here, just in case you want to see it for completeness. So you'll notice in this case, the open loop is the slowest. You'll see the time constant for this blue curve. It's much slower to settle, but it has actually got a better gain than some of these closed loops. What next? Let's look at the inputs for this particular example one. So if I look at the inputs, what do you notice? Exactly as we said, when k equals 10, very aggressive input starts at 10. k equals 1 starts at 1. k equals 0.1 starts at 0.1. So nothing is for free. What about question 2 then? So there's the transfer function for question 2. You'll see it's 16 over s plus 48. And now I'm going to put it in feedback with this compensator we chose. You'll see I've put in there 52 over 16, which is what we came up with. And what you notice, here's the closed loop transfer function. I've highlighted it here. 16s plus 16,000 is the denominator. And it should be obvious from you there that that gives a time constant of 1 over 100. Question 4. A system G of S and a compensated K of S are connected with unity negative feedback. Where's the closed loop pole? And what's the required gain to make the closed loop time constant equal to 4? And here's the system that you're given. G equals 1.7 over 11S plus 0.6 and K of S equals K. So we want to know where's the closed loop pole and what choice of K will I use to get a time constant of 4? So let's look at the answer then. So if I put this into closed loop with an arbitrary k, I'm going to get the closed loop transfer function is 1.7k over 11s plus 0.6 plus 1.7k. So where, therefore, is the pole? Well, the pole is going to be at minus 0.6 plus 1.7k. I'd better put brackets around that to be clear. Divided by 11. So hopefully that was relatively straightforward. And the next question is it said, we want the time constant equal to 4. And you remember, this is minus 1 over the pole. So what we're saying is 4 equals 11 over 0.6 plus 1.7 times k. Or alternatively, this implies 0.6 plus 1.7k equals 11 over 4. Well, finally, I can rearrange this to give you that k equals 11 over 4 minus 0.6, all divided by 1.7. So if I put in that answer, then I should get a required time constant of 4. So let's go to MATLAB and just try it. 
So here's my g. Let's enter that first. You can see 1.7 over 11s plus 0.6. Here's my k using that formula which we've just written. You'll see 11 over 4 minus 0.6 divided by 1.7. So that gives k of 1.2647. And let's enter that k and see what closed loop transfer function we get. So you'll see I've done um, feedback g times k and I get 2.15 over 11s plus 2.75 and hopefully it's obvious to you that 11 is 4 times 2.75 so the time constant is 4. Final question then. A system is to be connected in feedback with a proportional compensator m equals k and you can see the system there it is, g equals 0.2 of s plus 0.4. Given a desired settling time of 0.6 seconds, a desired steady state gain of 0.9, and a maximum input of 3, justify a suitable choice of k. So what we're going to have to do is look at these specifications and see what does this tell us about the required k. First then, let's derive the closed loop transfer function. So gc is going to be 0.2k over s plus 0.4 plus 0.2k. And what we were told is we were told we want the settling time of 0.6, so that means the time constant has got to be less than about 0.2. Um, I'm using three times the time constant to be roughly the settling time. And we also were told that the gain had to be greater than 0.9. So those were my two criteria. There was another criteria. We'll go to that one in a minute. So let's start with the time constant. T equals 1 over 0.4 plus 0.2k. And we want this to be less than 0.2. So I can rearrange this to write 5 is less than 0.4 plus 0.2k. Or what does that give me? 4.6 over 0.2 is less than k. Or finally, 23 less than k. So in order to meet the time constant requirement, I need k to be bigger than 23. Now let's go down here and look at the steady state gain. Well, the steady state gain was 0.2k divided by 0.4 plus 0.2k. You can see that reading directly from the sheet. And we wanted this to be greater than 0.9. So we get 0.2k has to be greater than 0.4 um, sorry, 0.36, get it right, plus 0.18k. And if I move the case to the same side, 0.02k greater than 0.36, or finally k greater than 18. So in order to meet the game requirement, I need k to be bigger than 18. Now, let's go back to the previous page and just reread the question. What do you notice? We also wanted a maximum input of 3. And what you'll find is that u of 0 equals k. And so what does this tell you? That our requirements are inconsistent. And don't be afraid to say that, because sometimes that's what examiners are looking for you, looking for you to spot. I can't meet all these requirements at the same time. So we've given you some tutorial questions and we've given you some worked solutions.